Okay, let's keep going. All right. I know I had a, I had a questions on the KM. Let's put it this way. KM is constant for substrate and the end for a specific enzyme and substrate relationship, KM is constant. Is that clear for everybody? For what I was saying about the temperature, that is not clear and then don't take that in consideration. I put it in, as you said, it can change, but it will not change all the time or it's not a constant uh, occurrence. So KM is constant. Is that clear for everybody? KM is constant, okay. Now, let's keep going now. I'm gonna talk about inhibition, okay, enzyme catalyzed, enzyme catalyzed reactions. All right, so it turns out in the biological system, you know, we have thousands of enzymes, and all of them catalyze specific re reactions. And if you call what says the, um, you know, we are chemistry, that's chemical reactions, basically, system life. And all of those, chemical reactions, many of them are catalyzed by uh, enzymes. So enzymes are very, very important. But because they are very important, they have to be regulated, okay? And some of those molecules that contribute to the regulation of enzymes, that's what we're gonna talk about, okay? And those are regulators, some enzymes, some molecules can stimulate the activity, those are called activators. Uh, in the gluco, in the hemoglobin, what is the activator? Stimulate the activity. Oxygen, right? But now we have a bunch of inhibitors, right? Such as what? Allosteric inhibitors. Carbon monoxide, uh, carbon, no, carbon allosteric. Carbon monoxide, it's inhibitor, but not allosteric, right? And allosteric means a small molecule bind to the and changes affinity. But inhibitors, by definition, basically, it's, it could be allosteric, but inhibitor can also be a poison that can kill the enzyme, okay? And we're gonna differentiate between the two now, okay? So you have your allosteric um, inhibitors that bind to the molecule and just decrease its activity or affinity for the substrate or just bind to the active site uh, covalently and kill the enzyme. So several drugs, and one thing you have to remember, you're gonna be prescribing drugs, right? And many of those drugs are inhibitors. So that's why this is important. Don't think you will give you your biochemistry just to confuse you. It's very, very, you will see most of them in the pharmacology and stuff, because most drugs you're gonna be prescribed are inhibitors of the enzyme, either enzyme or uh, receptors and so forth, okay? So one example is the uh, drug metotrexate is used in the cancer treatment. So this molecule basically inhibit DNA synthesis. Uh, you target a specific enzyme, uh, shut it down, and uh, the DNA synthesis is now regulated. As you know, uh, in the DNA synthesis, or cancer, for instance, one particular thing, uh, characteristics of cancer, they will not die in normal cell death, and they continue proliferating, right? So one activity that has to occur, or process has to occur, in order for cell to grow, you have to have cell uh, DNA synthesis for division to occur, right? Because you need a DNA, new DNA synthesis, you saw the DNA synthesis, right? for a new cell to be uh, generated, right? So if you block the DNA synthesis so you inhibit cancer cell growth, does that make sense? So metatrixate is used in that direction. So you can also inhibit a nuclear, um, this, for instance, in ATZ. This one target uh, virus uh, duplication, basically the DNA synthesis in a virus, especially in RNA virus. And if you get incorporated, you basically get taken and get incorporated, can inhibit uh, DNA synthesis. So many of those drugs that you'll be writing, you know, uh, 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 inhibitors. Now you also have a poison. I think you've seen a few of those, the cyanide and CO, carbon monoxide. Again, carbon monoxide, when it binds to the uh, hemoglobin, basically uh, it binds to tidy. You don't have a deoxy, but you have a carbo, uh, carboxy hemoglobin, right? So that's a difference on the two. I know I had a lot of questions on that in the exam, but it's carbon monoxide created the carboxy hemoglobin, not the deoxy hemoglobin. So now, so cyanide also bind to the oxygen binding site, but it can also kill the uh, mitochondria uh, electron transport chain. So those are poison. 
okay? Because they bind covalently. But carbon monoxide don't bind. Well, the, it's so tight, it looks like a covalent binding, okay? But yeah, the cyanide also, you know, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a poison because it killed the enzyme, basically. So now, it turns out there are many ways you can jam a machine, right? Uh, the enzyme machine, you can jam it many ways, either reversibly or irreversibly, right? Does that make sense? So now, reversible inhibition, that's like you have an allosteric molecule bind, affect the activity for certain times, and later on, leave, and then the enzyme move on with its job, right? Or you can just shut it down completely, covalently link an inhibitor, and the enzyme is dead. That's irreversible inhibition. Is that clear? So now we're going to talk about mostly uh, reversible inhibition, because that's where most drugs are. But you're going to be dealing with the irreversible inhibition when he's getting to things that are poisons. So you're going to need to deal with those two, OK? And those are poison-related uh, stuff. So irreversible, they're not good stuff. For irreversible, you will use them in the drug. Uh, related activities. So reversible inhibition, as I said, you have interaction, dissociation, you, it's molecule interact with the enzyme, suppresses activity, and later on dissociate and the enzyme move on. And you have irreversible covalent language and cyanide. Now penicillin is another example of drug, but it doesn't target us, it targets bacterial wall synthesis. So it's targeted an enzyme, uh, transpeptidase, and kills it. Once it kills the bacteria, we don't have that enzyme because we don't synthesize cell wall. So it targets only that uh, enzyme in the bacteria. So it shut it down so the bacteria will not be able to synthesize cell wall and will later on die because it cannot control the uh, osmotic pressure inside it. Okay? So those are, this is a poison, this is a poison, but this poison is not for us, for the bacteria. So. Now, we're going to talk about all the, uh, so far, what we're going to talk about is the reversible inhibitions, OK? Reversible inhibitions, you have a competitive inhibition, non-competitive inhibition, and one that I gave it to you, the uncompetitive. Mostly, you see this in most uh, stuff, but I, I give it to, for you to have it and be armed for it in case you see that in the board exam already, because they're very, very close, and you can easily get it, and then you'll be ready for it come about in your board exam, OK? All right, let's talk about competitive inhibition. It is a reversible inhibition, right? So competitive inhibition, as you see here, if you recall this, the enzyme uh, kinetics, so basically, inhibitor bind to the free enzyme, OK? So once it binds to it, it prevents the binding of the substrate, so the enzyme is not in the um, no free enzyme, or not free enzyme, free enzyme uh, inhibition complex. So it cannot bind to the uh, substrate, okay? But this is a dynamic situation. You bind to it, stop it for a moment, and you release it, and the enzyme can go back to a free enzyme side and can act on the uh, substrate and move on, okay? All right, here is how this looks like. You have your free enzyme, and this is a regular substrate. And the substrate binds to the active site, and then it gets transformed to a product, right? But you see the inhibitor. The inhibitor look like the substrate, so it folds the enzyme. So it comes and binds to the active site, as you see here, and prevent the binding of the regular sub uh, substrate on the active site. So basically, because it blocks the active site, it's the competing for the substrate uh, on the active site, OK? They're com competing with the substrate for the active site, OK? They're competing for the abs uh, with the substrate with the substrate for the active site. Is that clear? They're competing, so that's why it's called competitive inhibition, because the inhibitor and the substrate are competing for the active site. Now you can overcome this by doing what? The add, increasing the amount of substrate concentration, just like you do with the carbon monoxide, when you bind to the active side hemoglobin, what you do is to bombard the person with a high hypertonic oxygen, right? In order to compete with it. So the, once the CO come off, then the oxygen starts binding. So basically, you're diluting the inhibitor. Is that clear? So the competitive inhibition can be overcome by increasing the substrate concentration. Is that clear? Good. 
and it is the only one, okay? So keep that in mind. All right. So now this is the Michaelis maintenance plot, and this is your double reciprocal plot. Now, if you look at in the Michaelis maintenance plot, as you add a substrate constant, uh, increase substrate concentration, you see this is without the inhibitor, right? But look at what happened. Once you add the uh, inhibitor on this enzyme, same enzyme concentration, but now you add the inhibitors on it, what happened, you have a delay on the reaction, but what happened at that enzymes at that point, the velocity at that point? What happened? What changed? KM change. So KM change, but look at it, what happened? If you recall, you can overcome by adding more substrate concentration, right? So now you've been able to overcome the uh, inhibition by adding more substrate concentration. So the two Vmax match at one point, okay? So, the, but the KM has changed. So it looks like the enzyme affinity has decreased for uh, the substrate, but in fact, it's competing with the inhibitor. Is that clear? So in a competitive inhibition, KM increases, and VMAC is not affected, is unaffected. Is that clear? Good. Oh. Now in the double reciprocal plot, look at it. What is affected here? It becomes a little more complex here, right? This is VMAC, did it change? One over VMAX. So one over VMAX didn't change, which means VMAX didn't change, but KM has changed. Now this KM here and this KM here, the new KM in the presence of the inhibitor is now called the KM apparent. Okay, it's not the real KM, but it's the KM in the presence of the inhibitor. We call the KM apparent. Okay, it appears to be, it's not the real one, but it appears to be due to the presence of the uh, inhibitor. Is that clear? So now the red one represents the line. So when you have the inhibitors in, it shift to the left. So the KM is shifted in the direct, this, the one over, uh, minus one over KM is shifted in this direction, close to the zero. Now, you, if you take the inverse on that, what happened to the KM after you calculated that? Eh? Up or down? Up or down? Can you tell from here, just like looking at it? It's easier here, right? But here it becomes much more complex. So, but exactly the KM increases. If the KM increases, the one over KM decreases. Does that make sense? Right. So now, similarity here. So now, one example of a competitive inhibitor is this uh, 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 drug here, uh, the statin, the statin, which is a precursor for statin. So basically, this drug look like HMG CoA. And what is, uh, what is the HMG CoA? So the, the HMG CoA is uh, uh, intermediate in the cholesterol synthesis. Cholesterol synthesis, uh, we touched a little bit on the, not, no, not yet, the lipoprotein. But anyway, cholesterol is synthesized from this molecule, acetyl coa So it started with the three acetyl coa At the end of the day, it's a lot of reaction. I'm not asking you to memorize the, the reaction, please. What I want you to know, this site, it's the, uh, there is an enzyme called the uh, HMG CoA reductase that catalyzes the rate determining step of the uh, steroid cholesterol synthesis. Here, HMG CoA is connected to malonate, and the enzyme that catalyzes that reaction is called HMG CoA reductase. This enzyme is the target for that drug. Okay? So, if somebody has a high cholesterol, you probably heard about statin, right? To low, it's exactly. So, the statin looks like the substrate here, which is the HMG CoA. You see? It, as you can see, you see the structure it look like? Now, but it's not the substrate, so it binds to the active site on the HMG CoA reductor, as you see here, it binds to it. It look like the HMG CoA, but look at all the stuff that is attached to it. So the HMG CoA cannot flip it to a product, so the enzyme stay there, confused, and struggle with this molecule until it come off and the new HMG CoA come about. Is that clear? So it compete for the active site so it's competing for the active side of HMG CoA reductase. So basically, the normal substrate and the inhibitor. So they're competing for the active side. That's a competitive inhibition. Is that clear? Is that clear? So now, if you want to overcome what you should do, increase what? 
HMG code, right? So you can alleviate this inhibition. All right. So the question came about here. Uh, which one of these is a competitive inhibitor for the hemoglobin? CO2? How many of you say CO2? How many say CO? Oh, good. Yeah, CO is the one, it goes directly to the active site. CO2 binds to a site that is completely different from the active site, okay? So CO, carbon monoxide, is the uh, competitive inhibitor, and then uh, block the binding of oxygen. And cyanus also bind to the, uh, the uh, basically to the, uh, to the iron in, uh, the oxygen binding cell. So this is your competitive inhibitor, okay? All right. So now the next one we're gonna talk about is non-competitive inhibition. So in the non-competitive inhibition, as you see here, as the name indicated, the enzyme active site is sitting in the, the substrate and the inhibitors are there. They don't compete with the active site. Everybody have their binding site. The end substrate come and bind to each side, the inhibitor bind to each side. The sites are different. So you see your enzyme here. Now you have a binding site for the substrate, the substrate, and you have a binding site for the inhibitor. They're both bind to different sites. They're not competing, that's why it's the name, non-competitive inhibition. So the enzyme compete, basically the, the enzyme form the complex here, E plus S, and then form ES complex and so forth. Now, now the enzyme can be bound by inhibitor by this rate constant, so you have an enzyme inhibitor complex. And now the inhibitor enzyme complex can bind to the substrate, yep. can bind to it. But once they bind to it, and then the complex can form also, but also can bind to the inhibitor and the complex can. So now this way, once this complex is formed, now the enzyme is sick. Either it shut down or slow down completely, okay? So the reaction, the velocity is slow down. So again, the inhibitor and the substrate do not bind to the same site. So they can bind, inhibitor can bind first, or the substrate can bind first. But the binding of one doesn't affect the binding of the other, okay? But only thing that is affected is the activity of the enzyme. Is that clear? So that's a non-competitive inhibition. Now, if you look at the Michaelis maintain plot compared to the uh, double reciprocal plot, it's easier here to understand what is affected. The V max, right? So the V max is affected, but not the KM. Okay, as you see here, the KM is not affected, but the V max is. And similarly, as you see here, uh, this is with the inhibitor, and this is without inhibitor. Okay, so one over V max is there, this is now one over Vmax apparent, because that's the new Vmax. It appeared to be the Vmax, but it's not really the Vmax. That's why the name Vmax is apparent, okay? It is a Vmax with the inhibitor, okay? Now, in this case, as you said, VMAC, uh, the Vmax is aff uh, affected, Vmax is decreased. How about the KM? Unchanged, right? Makes sense, right? So the enzyme, the binding of the enzyme, uh, the substrate to the enzyme is not affected, right? So the affinity is not, it's the activity that is affected. So, so non-competitive inner do not interfere the binding, and again, you cannot overcome the non-competitive inner by adding more substrate. That makes sense, right? Because by adding enzyme does not prevent, substrate does not prevent uh, inhibitor binding, the inhibitor gonna bind to it anyway, with or the, uh, without higher concentration of the uh, substrate. Okay, is this clear? Uh, one example is the allopurinol. Uh, this drug is utilized uh, targeting a specific the xanthine oxidase. You know, people who have uh, overproduction of uric acid for whatever reason, mutation, can lead to uh, increased nucleotide degradations. We will see that in the uh, Van Gogh disease, when you have a hyperproduction of the um, nucleotide and they get degraded, the, uh, those bases can be uh, 
power of ATP, ADP, uh, AMP, uh, AMP can, they don't get degraded, and GTP also, when they get degraded during the metabolism, and we're gonna talk about that in the future, but one particular enzyme is called the xanthine oxidase, which is catalyzed the conversion of hypoxanthine to xanthine and the xanthine to uric acid. The uric acid is a bad guy, it can crystallize, and that's what causes the gout. I'm sure you guys know about the gout. It can accumulate in your joint, and the person has a pants and stuff. Especially the people who eat a lot of meat, or even though they it's, said it's not the biggest target, but the, um, as you have defective enzymes, that you have deeper production of these molecules, and that they had to be you know, metabolized and excreted out. So you can have uric acid in your urine, but they can also crystallize from the gut in your joint, and you have a pain. So one way to treat that is to prevent these enz uh, enzymes to convert to hypoxanthine and xanthine to uric acid. So basically pushing the, your body to recycle these molecules, okay? So the enzyme, the, the drug target this enzyme, but it is non-competitive inhibitor, that's an example. So the inhibitor bind to its active site, uh, to its site, and substitute bind to the active site. Their site is different. Only thing is done is to slow down the activity of the enzyme. Is that clear? So that's one example. It's, it's many examples like here, but I'll just give you, so in case you see, basically what we're doing is give you examples. So when you see another enzyme acting this way, you know how they work, okay? So when you look at it, and you look at it, you look at the kinetics, um, look at this for instance. Here, the black one here on the below is the lean line here. This is with no uh, inhibitor, okay? Now when you increase the inhibitor concentration uh, by one or, or one, yeah, if you have an inhibitor concentration, it's supposed to be split, okay? So this is one and two, basically what do you mean one and two, but it's not the amount, okay? So basically, inhibitor concentration one, inhibitor concentration two. So what you have, the inhibitor, the inhibition is increasing, the curve is going this way, okay? So that way, this is what? Compared to this. What type of inhibition we're seeing here between those two plots? This is what? And this is competitive. How about here? This is a normal substrate and this is the inhibitor. What kind of inhibitor, inhibition this and this chemical will, will cause? Competitive, right? Because you see it look like the substrate, right? You know, I'll just give you an idea. You can have the plot, and this is how they, in, in, if you identify a new enzyme, and you want to know if the inhibitor or the new drug, for instance, if you want to find out how the drug interact with the the, the enzyme. So you can do the kinetic study in the presence or in the absence of the drug. And based on the structure gave it to you, you can you know, just conclude that, okay, this inhibitor or this drug is binding to the active site or is binding to a site that is different from the active site. Is that clear? So especially those on the enzymology, it's not what you, but at least you're gonna read about it since you're gonna be working with the drugs and at least you have to have an idea how the drug works. Either you inhibit the activity by binding to the active site or a site that is different on the active site, okay? And as you can see here, as you just indicated, this guy, this two, this guy is a competitive inhibitor of this one. Is that clear? All right. Now the next one is the uncompetitive inhibition. Now uncompetitive inhibition is, is also different. So basically, the, uh, the binding occur, the enzymes the inhibitor only binds to the enzyme when the ES complex is formed. So basically, the binding of the substrate created a binding site for the inhibitor, okay? So substrate, comp a substrate complex, uh, ES complex form, then the inhibitor can bind to it. That creates the active site for uh, the binding site for the inhibitor, and you have a complex formation, okay? And that will slow down the reaction, okay? As you see here, once the inhibitor, once the substrate binds, so the inhibitor is now open to bind and you have a complex formation, okay? Is this clear? The binding of the substrate to the enzyme create a binding site of the inhibitor. So here, the KM and the VMAX are both affected. As you see here, the KM is uh, affected and VMAX also affected, okay? 
So as I said, this is one, uh, one of the KM apparent. Uh, this is, um, I'm sorry, this is the, the real KM and the VMAX and the up, to, up here, this is one of the VMAX apparent and this is one of the KM apparent, okay? And again, this one cannot be overcome by uh, adding a substrate, highest concentrated substrate, right? So anytime you see lines that are parallel like this, that is your uncompetitive, okay? But again, the, when the binding occur, the fact that the activity is slow down, the VMAX will be affected, that is clear. I think the KM is the one that probably let you compete. Yeah, no, when you look at the, uh, as you see here, the binding of the inhibitor, it's not really uh, the, uh, the fact that the enzyme inhibitor bind to the, uh, the, uh, the one end, uh, the substrate bind, and the inhibitor bind, the, the fact that the inhibitor bind, and it make the binding site look like uh, for the inhibitor open now for binding. And uh, it turns out the fact that the end substrate at that point really look like it like the enzyme, because the enzyme concentration is like slightly not affected, but the binding affinity is kind of increased. It's kind of hard to explain it, but it looked like the affinity now is increased because of the presence of the enzyme, but it's not really occurring for real, but it's just apparent. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a concept, but in fact, it is, it is affected. Well, apparently affected, but not really affected, if that makes sense to you. Okay. Now, the, this is the example we have, you know, the second example that we have, similar to the first one, uh, uh, the, uh, and again, correct this in your slide, because I have a negative sign here, uh, one over Vmax, and this is minus one over Km, okay? Now, the first one is easier for you to calculate, right? We already calculated that, right? And the second, also easier for you to calculate, we also calculate, this is in absence of the inhibitor. Does that make sense? Now. Look at it in the presence of inhibitor. What's okay? What is change? What change? KM has changed. Does VMAX change? All right, here is the new one. Again, as I said, this is not the real KM, it is a KM apparent, right? It appeared to be to change. Now, again, you take that point, does this is your uh, minus one over KM apparent now? So you take, and as I said, always write it down. Here, if you look at between a zero and a 0.5, it's 0.25, right? So you say minus one over KM apparent, it's equal to minus 0.25, right? Is this clear? So now you inverse it. So now one over, uh, one over 0.25, and you do your calculation, and your KM apparent is four millimolar, compared to the, uh, a real KM, which one is higher? This is the real KM, right? And this is a KM apparent, right? What have changed? Uh, which one is higher? Huh? Just say it. <laughs> the KM apparent is higher, right? It looks like the affinity is has changed, right? So that's why it's called, it appeared that way. It's not really occurring, but it is appear that way because it ends, it is inhibitor makes it appear that the KM uh, is lower, but it is a KM apparent. The fact that I said the KM is fixed for enzyme for a substrate, now it's changed in the presence of inhibitor, that's what it's called, it's apparent, okay? Is that clear? Okay. Now, what kind of compare inhibition you we have here? Competitive, non-competitive, uncompetitive, activators, or whatever? Which one is it? Competitive inhibition. Anytime they compete for the y-axis, that's competitive. If uh, they're competing for the uh, x-axis, that's your non-competitive. There are others, okay, this is a really messy area in enzyme, enzyme kinetics. This is the three, but it's a different ones, mixed inhibition, 
uh, Mace competitor and all those. So, but I'm not, we're not gonna, those are if you wanna get a PhD in, in, in uh, biochem or enzymology. But so far, is the two one that I mentioned are the critical one, com competitive and non-competitive. And uncompetitive, as I said, it's, um, it's not that critical, but I think you should know it for the board and even for my exam. I think you should know it, okay? Good. Now, enzymes as a drug, as I said, and I took example, the penicillin, uh, penicillin bind to, we do not have the enzyme, the, beta, uh, the transpeptidase, right? Which is required for bacterial cell wall synthesis. Okay, and this is one thing, you know, remember viruses, it's hard to, tr not so many drugs against viruses, but now yes, maybe, yes. but back in those days, there was very limited amount of drug against viruses, right? So it turns out something, because the reason is the virus co-opt many of our own uh, enzymes for their own purposes. So when you wanna send a drug against them, you can't target them because you're gonna target your own, which create a much more side effect, right? So the best way if, a, uh, if I mean, a, a, a bug has a more proteins, then it's easier to target one of the enzymes. And because as I said, many drugs target enzymes, right? Or receptors and so forth. But the fact that viruses do not have a lot of proteins around, so they don't have a, that much target uh, to uh, protein to target, okay? But bacteria, they have, in one case, is those bacterial cell walls. The fact that they need a cell wall to survive the osmotic pressure. So the, end, the, uh, the drug beta lactam based enzyme penicillin amoxicillin basically target the, uh, the cell wall synthesis, a specific enzyme, as I mentioned, the transpeptidase, bind to and kill the enzyme so that the bacteria can all synthesize the cell wall and will not be able to sustain the, uh, the uh, the osmotic pressure. But not all drugs uh, such as uh, in, uh, I don't know, pril, mesinopril's, uh, those are basically uh, blood pressure drugs. Uh, they are used to in inhibit enzymes that basically cleave specific proteins that lead to uh, uh, vasoconstriction. As you look at it, the cleavage of uh, angiotensin one uh, to form uh, angiotensin two which basically this molecule cause of vasoconstriction. So you pre pre prevent the formation of the angiotensin II. You're probably gonna see that in physiology. So by these drugs, so you will not be able to synthesize this from here. And you're targeting the enzyme that catalyze the reaction. So as I said, many of those drugs basically target uh, enzymes. Uh, in this case, you target the enzyme that convert the angiotensin one to angiotensin two when this molecule is needed for vasoconstriction. So if you prevent the vasoconstriction, you can reduce the blood pressure. Uh, there are other drugs also can cause vasodilatation and so forth. Uh, this one basically causes the vasodilatation, but there are other drugs that prevent this one, okay? So again, in many cases, when people have issues controlling their blood vessel, I mean, uh, their blood pressure, not only you prevent the angiotensin uh, uh, formation, two formation, but you can also cause vasodilatation in order to, to attack the, the disorder both ways. Open the blood vessel, but prevent the construction as well. Is that, does that make sense? So that's why these drugs, these are vasodilator drugs, right? and then the other ones here, uh, is you can prevent enzymes that cleave the effects. But aspirin is another one. Uh, I inhibit the uh, synthesis of prostaglandin, uh, prostaglandin, uh, those are biomolecules uh, that play a role in many biological, uh, they are biological regulators. Uh, I'm sure you're gonna see that in physiology, uh, those prostaglandin, their function and so forth. But anyway, aspirin will inhibit their uh, prostaglandin synthesis, okay? And this is the transpeptide. And again, I'm not asking you to memorize this thing. I put some of this slide just to point it at the enzyme so it make much more sense to you where the target. So during the bacteria cell wall synthesis, you have a precursor, you have a precursor, they need to be linked in order to, uh, to form a, a, a final molecule. Now the transpeptidase play a role in this attachment. And then the penicillin, you know, basically block that transpeptidase activity and then prevent the cell wall synthesis, okay? 
And again, I'm not asking you to memorize this. I just want you to know the transcriptive is, uh, is inhibited by the penicillin and where the transcriptive is more. Does that make sense? So I'm not asking you to, I'm sure you're probably gonna say them back to the allergy, but what I'm asking, showing to you just is drugs, okay? Another drug here can also, different drug can block the activity. Okay, and then you have now the list of some chemical, I mean, now they are irreversible inhibitors, right? And then these basically poisons, okay? Because they shut down your enzyme completely and it's not gonna work for you. Now, one of the examples, the certain guys, uh, you probably heard of the no, no, no region. Um, you know, many times if you see fluorine on the chemicals like this, it becomes a little scary. Because the fluorine, as you know, in chemistry is a good living group. And once the fluorine leaves, especially when the, the molecule comes with the proteins, the enzyme active side, the fluorine just leaves, and then you have a, so the, uh, the drug, basically you have this covalent linkage between uh, this phosphate now and the active, and the active side. So once that uh, covalent linkage occur after serine, uh, fluorine leaves, now you have a covalent and an enzyme is then dead. Does that make sense? So anytime you see fluorine in the chemicals like this, it becomes a little scary. Because if they look like a substrate, they can cause uh, irreversible uh, inhibition of the, the enzyme. And there are many of them, uh, again, as I said, uh, penicillin is on one example, not for us, but for the, for the bacteria. Okay? But many of these affect us, so you have to be careful. Cyanide is another example, to bind to the active site, especially in the complex four and kill the enzyme and kill the mitochondria. So cyanide is a very bad molecule. Even in a low dose, uh, you gotta be careful with it because you, you shut down your mitochondria on you quickly. Now I give you a summary here uh, of everything we said. This is from your USMLE book. I know it's a lot of information but this would give you, you know, straight up in front of you, uh, summarize everything that I said in terms of KM uh, or the inhibition, how they can be overcome changes. For instance, the competitive inhibition uh, is irreversible. Uh, now, it, the substrate concentration can be overcome by the substrate concent high substrate concentration, but neither of these two can be overcome uh, with this uh, over, uh, with this high substrate concentration. Now, this one, the competitive inhibition we have here, this is irreversible. Don't confuse that with the reversible ones. Does that make sense? Okay, good. So don't confuse that. So that's what I want to make sure you see that these are irreversible. Those are the poison that are cyanide and stuff. Cyanide will bind to the uh, hemoglobin, you know, the uh, heme, and covalently link to it. Those are competitive inhibitors that are irreversible. But those that I have described earlier are reversible, if you recall. They can be overcome by a substrate, high substrate uh, uh, concentration. They bind to the active side, just like the uh, competitive irreversible ones. And then the B marks unchanged, but KM goes up, okay? Now this is, uh, you see that pharmacology, I'm not gonna elaborate on that. Now, again, as I said, we didn't say much about this, but what I want you to know, when they bind to, if, if it's, a, if it's a, a competitive inhibitor and it's irreversible, those poisons, uh, you can overcome them by adding more substrate, and they bind to the active site uh, and affect, uh, uh, but the KM is not changed. Now, the uh, non-competitive inhibitor, so this one and this one, as you see here, uh, you cannot overcome with an increasing substrate concentration and does not bind to the, uh, active site, bind to site that is different, and the VMAX goes down, because VMAX is the one that's affected, and KM is unchanged. So basically, this gives you a little bit of summary uh, of everything I said to a certain extent. And as you see on the USMLE book, the, the uh, uncompetitive inhibition is not listed in there. And it, again, I think it's just fair for you to have it. I'm not saying it is, you will see on all the, but I think it's good for you to know the KM and VMAX is changing on the uncompetitive inhibition. But these two are the most important ones. And just know the irreversible ones, there's covalent language to the active site and the enzyme is there. Okay. 
Okay? Is that clear? Any question? We have 10 more minutes. If you have any question, I'll be happy to answer at this point. If not, I'm done. Yes. Are there any drugs that act as uncompetitive inhibitors? I think that our drugs affect that way. But I don't have an example to give it to you. But if you want, I can look it up if I can find a drug there. I think I've seen drugs doing yeah, uncompetitive inhibition. That's what it's been. But I'm not saying I don't have a particular example, if that's your question. Yeah. Yes. Are there any uh, irreversible inhibitors that we need to know? Do we need to know that whole list or just like the concept of it? The irreversible ones? Well, I'll give you a couple examples. Uh, I gave you a few examples. I think I even have oh, here. For instance, the cyanide. The cyanide by and kill the enzyme is irreversible. Okay? And then, you know, the cyanide. You didn't, you didn't see the, uh, you didn't go to over the uh, oxidative phosphorylation. But I'm sure you guys had uh, oxidative phosphorylation. And a complex four, which is cytochrome C oxidase enzyme, which is a last complex in the uh, electron transport chain, where the electron pass from, uh, cyto take the, uh, from the cytochrome C to the uh, oxygen to form water. There is a, a complex called complex four, cytochrome C oxidase. That enzyme is a target for uh, cyanide, okay? So it binds to it. Once it binds to it, it kills that complex four. Now, if you kill the complex four, can the electron flow through the electron transport chain? No. And then once you kill the mitochondria, you're in big trouble, right? Now, some of the if you only kill a few of them, you're fine. But if you kill all the mitochondria complex four, you cannot synthesize ATP. And this is one thing um, you're probably going to see that on the, when you talk about the phosphorylation. It's the, um, the rat poison, for instance. Many of those drugs target uh, mitochondria complexes. So one of those proteins. Uh, the rotenol, for instance, rotenol would target the complex one. And it is a horrible way to see these rat dying from these things. It is a slow death. They start losing the capacity of synthesizing uh, ATP from the mitochondria. And you know, muscle contraction and many other stuff really is, uh, ATP is needed for many biochemical reactions. So when the, um, those ATP synthesis is affected because you affect uh, the uh, mitochondria uh, electron transport chain, so the ATP, so the, the rat will just be lacking energy for a long time until it dies. So it is a slow death. And I've seen a few of them, you know, when we do experiment, they just sluggish because they don't have any energy until they collapse and die completely. Yeah. Is, did, I, did I answer your question? Uh, any other? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, you, I'm not asking to memorize a poison or a drug uh, because I'm not doing the pharmacology. So what I want you to know how um, irreversible inhibitors works as a biochemist. But I'm not asking you, if I'm asking you cyanides, I have to tell you uh, the end, end product. So basically, I want you to understand what a irreversible inhibition means, what a competitive, uh, competitive inhibition means, what a reversible, non I mean, irreversible competitive inhibition means, what reversible competition inhibition means, what non-competitive uh, uh, non -competitive, non -competitive inhibition means, and uncompetitive. In a sense that those three groups that I put, if you recall, make uh, competitive, uh, non-competitive, uncompetitive, I put them in a reversible group. Now, if you go to an irreversible group, uh, you have competitive, irreversible ones, and those, I didn't elaborate much on them. And that's what that I call the poisons. They bind to the active site and kill the enzyme. Those are not as critical as the reversible one that I was mentioning. Because many of those drugs work either as a reversible competitive, uh, non-competitive, or uncompetitive, if that makes sense. OK? But I give you the example of irreversible uh, for the poison. But the penicillin one, for example, that's a good example. For instance, that's a good example 
But that doesn't target the enzyme in our body. It's in the bacteria, if you recall. OK, does that make sense? Yeah, you have more questions? Um, your last learning objective says the effects of a suicide inhibitor. Yeah, suicide, what is that? Those are, those are these guys. Yeah, they come and just, yeah, they're buying to, yeah, same thing, yeah, same name. Yeah, those are irreversible. They bind it and that's it, we all go together. Any other questions? No? All right, thank you.